let's wrap this stuff up. All right, so right in class, uh, we're basically final assignments are going to be the Blake Snyder beat sheet, which I'm going to go into in this uh, little lecture, and the board, which will be the, the last video. Um, quick wrap up here, uh, Blake Snyder, page 62, save the cat. Uh, just a quick review, give me, tell me a story, in Blake Snyder's word, tell me a story about a guy who, okay, uh, he's talking about an active protagonist, an active protagonist with a specific clear goal. Remember, be specific, be, be specific, be specific. Okay, sorry. Uh, so uh, the protagonist, who, a guy who you can identify with. This ties into the whole Save the Cat, the name of the, the, name of the book, a moment where we can identify, right, sometimes literally save the cat. We saw that with The Incredibles. It starts out with Mr. Incredible saving, literally saving a cat. Um, and the opposite, uh, the, uh, the a, a example that he gives where that doesn't happen is the Laura Croft, the first Laura Croft movie, right, where we just don't have a reason to care about her. So someone we can identify with, someone we can learn from. This ties into the thing we've been talking about over and over in all the stories, the theme slash the character arc that the character is going to learn within the course of the story and by their example we are going to learn um, as an audience okay uh, a compelling reason to follow that ties into the cl uh, clear specific goal right we need a compelling reason to follow them that's basically a compelling goal okay this you'll you'll remember this from all the uh, all the stories we've talked about so far in the fairy tales a a a guy who deserves to win and he's using guy non-gender specific i'm sure of it okay a guy who deserves to win and the pro and the stakes of this story are primal now this is where me and uh, mr snyder slightly disagree i understand his argument the more primal the stakes are right you're going to be facing a big shark, and if you don't, you're gonna get you don't win. You're gonna get eaten. That's pretty primal, right? He's in his words something a caveman will understand. I also I by contrast really 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 like the movies that are capable of having what seem less than primal stakes still be uh, extremely compelling. Movies like Rudy, right? It's not life or death whether he gets into uh, Notre Dame, but it is. We understand why. It's in his mind essentially life or death, um, and and what I bring up bring up uh, many times is uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, right? Is he just wants to get his bicycle back, but still somehow we can, it, and I think that's more clever writing than having to save the world, right? Every time elevating the stakes to that. Although, right, Blake Snyder made more money than I have, so uh, okay. So primal stakes are one last time a guy who can we can identify with. Save the cat, learn from, theme arc, compelling, reason to follow, clear, specific goal, deserves, got everything to do with it, uh, deserves to win, and primal stakes. Okay, now before we get to the beat sheet specifically, uh, one thing about avoiding cliché, uh, especially this happens with antagonists. Now, you might notice the fun with facial hair pandemic mustache I've got going. Um, I like to refer to this as the Johnny Ringo Tombstone fans. Um, the cliche antagonist, the bad guy, right? Well, the reason we I don't use the word bad guy and I specify antagonist, right? Because they have, if you want them to be something other than a cliche, a mustache twirling cliche, uh, you're going to have to realize that they are a person with an opposite goal to the protagonist. Hence the word antagonist rather than villain or bad guy. Are they a bad guy? Are they a villain? Maybe. The difference really, the only real difference between bad guys and good guys is bad guys never learn anything. They do not have a character arc. Got it? Yeah, that's the revelation. Okay, so you want an antagonist with the exact opposite goal, a goal that's completely in direct conflict with our uh, protagonist, and hence maximizing conflict. And if you think of it that way, you will, uh, you will avoid the typical cliche of having a bad guy. Okay, Blake Snyder Beat Sheet, otherwise known as the BSBS. Uh, all right, the reason I like Blake Snyder, and I've told you about other uh, authors uh, that uh, 
uh, whose books are very useful. Uh, Linda Seeger, Making a Good Script Great. Um, um, Robert McKee, his book, Story, is fantastic. All of those are out there. Blake Snyder, the reason we go with this, the reason it, uh, I like it for this class and for you guys starting out is it's concise and simple and he really does a good job of just breaking things down into these simple 15 beats that every movie needs to have if you're going to make a lot of money in Hollywood. So that's what this class is about, Hollywood screenwriting, right? avant-garde, the whole different thing. We've talked about that in other classes. Let's get to it. Okay, number one, opening image. Page one, right? It's the opening image. So it's it's going to have something great that sets the tone, sets the idea of where it's at, and has something. The one that comes to my mind immediately is Gladiator, uh, with uh, the Gladiator main character, his hand in the in the field of wheat, right, with the rings and stuff on. But we're going to see a mirror of that. We'll come back to that for closing image. Okay. Uh, so just something really cool that sets the tone. Okay, um, theme stated, all right, now page five, someone in Blake Snyder's screenplays are going to say something to the effect of, be careful what you wish for, um, and it's not, he, it's going to come out, you know, he argues it's going to come out in the natural course of conversation, it won't be too obvious, but even, even so, I think that might be pushing a little bit, you don't necessarily need to have a character state the theme, but if it works out, why not? And more importantly, you need to know what the theme is, because that's really the whole point of making a freaking movie in the first place, is uh, having some sort of argument you want to make to the world. Otherwise, what are you doing? You're making a Transformers movie, which is fine, right? Rich and famous, good. Now, for us, you know, getting it to be on just mere disposable entertainment, have some argument that you, as a filmmaker, care about, that's what's going to make you want to finish this film, and it's going to give you also the basis, more importantly, probably for making money, the character arc, right? So have, it's an argument, it's a statement, it's a thesis uh, statement uh, all right, that, you, that you're going to try to prove during the course of this film, right? Uh, so, um, what, whatever you are interested in, that should be your theme. Whether you have a character say it or not on page five, uh, okay. All right, so number three, the setup. All right, you got to, in a feature length film, you got about 10 minutes before people are gonna start getting bored that you can do pretty much whatever you want. And that's where you're gonna take the time to have the setup explaining what the character's about, where they at, what their world is, the normal world in, in, um, in uh, Hero's Journey. Joseph Campbell uh, terms, the ordinary world, right? So you're going to set that up. How is this person living? What's their life like? Is it a good life? Is it a bad life? It doesn't matter. Something's going to come in. Uh, however, Blake Snyder adds that this is a place where you're going to have six things about the main character that need fixing. And I ran out of room, so I did the fix apostrophe and so actual fixing. Six things that need fixing. He also uh, argues that this is a great place where you're going to, these, these six things that need fixing is going to allow you to set up some gags, these setups and that are going to have payoffs as the character learns and changes or at first, of course, doesn't learn, right? A lot of the humor can be it's, uh, found in these six things that need fixing. You can think of movies like uh, the Jack Nicholson one, as good as it gets. He's got probably more than six things, but we're gonna, those are going to play in throughout that screenplay. And we're going to have a bunch of setups and payoffs based on his uh, personality shortcomings. Okay. The Catalyst. Um, number four. By the way, I forgot to mention, uh, these are the numbers to the right here, pay, uh, 12. Those are the pages where this is supposed to occur on, according to Blake Snyder and most people. Okay. The catalyst, also known as the inciting incident. Something's going to happen. There'll be an incident that's going to cause or create a problem or a specific goal, clear goal, that needs to be solved in the course of the, the next, uh, 100 minutes or so, right? Um, it's clear, it's specific, it's a goal or t some type of problem that's going to come in at page 12, and that's when the plot actually begins. If it doesn't happen by page 12, people are going, you're going to start losing your audience. They're going to get bored. They're going to be, what's this movie about? Because they won't know what the plot is. The plot is everything to do with this, what Blake Snyder calls a catalyst, what everyone else calls the inciting incident. But what I've been saying over and over again, a clear, specific goal. Okay. Debate. 
Number five on the beat sheet, uh, page, uh, pages 12 to 25. Uh, this, uh, this ties into Joseph Campbell's refusal of the call, but it's, I like, it's, it's not just will they do the mission or accept the mission or the goal, can they? That's part of that debate. And sometimes it's more of a can they than will they. Um, in uh, uh, Legally Blonde, um, she decides she's going to go to Harvard pretty much right away. But then, the, so the big debate really becomes, can she get into Harvard? So that's part of this. So basically, after the inciting incident, the refusal of the call slash debate slash can they get into Harvard or do what accomplish this goal, or will they, right? So, uh, you know, 12, page 12 to 25. Number six is the break into two. Now, this is usually done in a plot reversal where the half baked, uh, easy uh, attempts to solve the problem fail, and they're going to have to regroup and think of something else. They're going to have to come up. But also, it's essentially crossing that threshold where they've really committed. The easy plan fails. Remember, what do, what do all humans do to solve a problem? The easiest thing first, that's where you start. When that doesn't work out, you're going to have to really commit, and this is usually also in Joseph Campbell terms where you cross the threshold, where you go into the antithesis, which is the opposite of the ordinary world, the extraordinary world. Okay. Okay, you may have noticed I had to switch to the green dry erase, my black one, so for you guys, ceremonially, almost hit myself. Okay, uh, number seven, the B story, page 30. This is the slub plot, subplot. It's usually a love interest of some type, uh, but for you guys to also remember, this is what's going to also help emphasize the theme, your thesis argument. Uh, a lot of this is going to be mirrored in the problems and solutions of the B story. And there's often a C story, a D story, even sometimes an E story. I think uh, Tootsie, the movie Tootsie with Dustin often has a F story as well. It, all those are going to interweave working around and towards the plot, emphasizing the theme, right? Okay, so, uh, number eight, fun and games in Blake Snyder's terms. Okay, kind of confusing, I think. But generally, these are the cool scenes that you thought of that made you want to make this movie in the first place. You say, oh, what if there's this big Death Star and I have to, they have to dismantle it and it'll be, oh, that'll be cool. This is basically where you're going to put those scenes, right? And J Blake Snyder calls it the promise of the premise. You came up with this idea and this is where you deliver on this, this premise. Um, um, okay, pages 30 to 55. So basically a big chunk of Act 2. Uh, this also, I think more, to say more clearly, it's where the, uh, you're going to have to have your protagonist, usually along with his helpers and allies, develop a new plan, right? The, oh, the first plan, the easy way, didn't work. They're going to have to figure something else out. In Star Wars, they were trying to get to Alderaan. Boom, it's exploded, right? Okay, How, what, what do we do now? Well, we're, on, we're on the Death Star. They see that the princess is there we, we, over this fun and games, this promise of the premise, there's all this cool sci-fi stuff, they come up with a new plan. We're going to kidnap the princess or rescue her, and with her and the plans, we're going to, she'll know where the rebel base is, we can go there, right? This happens over the course of basically the, the act two, uh, 30 to, page 30 to 55, right? So that, I think, helps explain it. Um, and we're going, the, the new plan is going to lead us to the midpoint which is going to be a false victory or a false defeat. In Star Wars, it's kind of both. Uh, in Star Wars, the victory is they escape with the princess, but it's a false victory because the Darth Vader has put a tracking device on the ship, and that's they're going to lead them, the Empire straight to the Rebels' hideout. Uh, the false defeat part of that is when Obi-Wan Kenobi gets killed, right? Uh, and so it seems like, oh my god, all is lost there. I shouldn't say all is lost because that's coming up. Um, but in, in, in the end, it's a false defeat as well because Obi Kenobi doesn't really die, right? Uh, because of the Force. Okay, so. Number 10, bad guys close in. 
All right, so the bad guys, after uh, the uh, new plan almost working, uh, and you have that false victory, the bad guys come back, regroup, are even stronger than before, and doesn't look good, uh, right? So we have the bad guys regrouping in Star Wars, the example, of course, the uh, tractor beam's been put on, and now the Death Star is closing on the rebel base, and now the whole, everything's threatened with total annihilation, right? So possible worst case scenario, and it's gonna lead us to number 11, uh, page 75, uh, uh, all is lost. Okay, so the new plan's gonna fail. Uh, or the new plan has failed, right? They, they thought they had succeeded, but what they really did was lead the Empire straight to the rebel thing. It's a complete epic fail. Um, and it's, uh, Blake Center says it's the inverse of the midpoint, so if it was a false victory, this is now going to be the absolute false defeat. Uh, uh, somewhat confusingly, if it's uh, the midpoint is a, uh, a false defeat, and this is now a um, uh, a false victory, the all is lost title doesn't really apply. But anyway, th that's what he says. But mainly, the bottom line is your new new plan, the plan that you developed uh, during uh, the, the fun and games and all of Act Two, has now not worked, and it looks like nothing's going to work. It's absolutely. The, the worst case scenario, there's no way out of this. The, it, no one, the, the audience, you, the heroes, no one can figure out how could we possibly get out of this. And we have uh, number 12, the dark night of the soul, somewhere between pages 75 and 85, where the hero, basically the antagonist, protagonist, questions everything. Um, why do I even live? Why did I bother? Why did I come here? This nothing means nothing. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, uh, why am I here even? Uh, why am I doing these videos? <laughs> um, sorry. Um, Blake Snyder uses the term whiff of death. He says, add a little whiff of death where someone has died. Um, we, had the, we had the whiff of death with uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi dying for sure. And it's a little bit out of order, but remember this is an art form, uh, not engineering. So the page numbers Blake Snyder likes to stand hard and fast on, they're somewhat flexible. Um, he does have to point out the great example in Elf where uh, even in a silly comedy like Elf, we have a whiff of death at this moment where our Elf is going to, looking on the bridge, thinking that he's going to possibly commit suicide. Okay, last one. Um, 13, break into three, into the third act, page 85. The new plan has failed. We need a new new plan. And that's what's going to happen. The hero uh, and his allies are going to come up with a, they're going to have an epiphany. They're going to, something's going to happen often tied into the B story. They're going to help them realize, oh, we can do this, right? There is a weakness in the Death Star. We can do it. And Luke realizes, I have the ability to accomplish this. Um, and we're going to have a big finale, page 85 to 110 in Blake Snyder's uh, page count. And it's basically that big set action piece that you've been waiting for, where the Rebels are going to finally blow up the Death Star and temporarily set back the Empire, because we have sequels that are coming up. Um, so that's why it's temporary. All right. Then finally, the plan finally works, right? And so this whole two hours of failed plans, we're going to finally have a plan that work. And why does it work? It's because... The hero has learned. Tying back into the theme, the hero has learned the lesson. What has Luke learned? He's learned to accept the Force and be confident. Uh, not just a, a whiny old, uh, whiny young farm kid, I guess. Uh, so, uh, because the hero has learned, Blake Starr is going to call this part synthesis, right? So he breaks down the three parts, basically Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, into antithesis, also known, or, I'm sorry, thesis, ordinary world, antithesis, the extraordinary world, and now the synthesis. The hero has gotten the elixir, and they're now able to be masters of both worlds. Got it? That's that's ties into the Joseph Campbell. Uh, and I like to think it in, in my terms, uh, just also simply, uh, we had a plan A. We had a plan A. I stepped on my dog. Sorry, I stepped on you, Charlie. We had a plan A, a plan B, and then a plan C, Act 1, Act 2, Act 3. Got it? Easiest, next easiest, and then the most difficult, ridiculous thing that somehow works because the hero has learned. All right, then wrapping it all up, number 15, um, 
the final image. All right, our images probably be more likely. It's motion pictures, uh, not stills. So the final images, uh, they should mirror the opening image, as we said. You see this in Gladiator. Uh, it kind of represents like the sort of acceptance and return to the family and, and, and peace and away from war. I don't know. Uh, I have to think about that more. In, in, in Star Wars, we have Luke getting, and, and along with uh, his allies, getting the awards and the big ceremony. He's now been elevated from ordinary uh, farm kid to extraordinary hero, master of both worlds, whatever you want to call it. Those are your 15 beats. Good luck.